Hello, I am Sam Mies. There's a lot of things most people haven't experienced. What came first, chicken or the egg? What really happened to the dinosaurs? The first, po uh, first point of view of the, before the Revolutionary War. Well, I don't know which came first, chicken or the egg, and I have no idea how the dinosaurs got extinct, but I can show you a first point perspective of the events leading up to the Revolutionary War. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited, I can't wait! Now you may be wondering how I can show you a first person view of the Revolutionary War. Well that's with my good friend, Dudley Bladders. Now, Dudley lived during, the, be, during and before the Revolutionary War. He was a good man. Living, he lived in Boston, and he fixed boats and thatched roofs. Now, in 1763, things were pretty good between the colonies and Great Britain. The colonies in Great Britain helped each other in the French and Indian War, and they were pretty close. Until they made the Proclamation Line of 1763. I remember the Proclamation Line of 1763. It didn't affect me since I lived in Boston, but I heard a lot of farmers were pretty angry about it. Oh well, sucks to be them. Amazing. Now, after 1763 and 1764, things changed with the Sugar Act. It taxed sugar and molasses, making them more expensive. How much is the sugar? 1450 plus tax. No! Yeah, Sugar Act affected me a lot. You know, being a hard worker, working all the time, I always loved my sugar. And the fact that they were making us charge more for it was really not cool with me. But the acts were just starting. In 1765, the British Parliament released two more acts, the Quartering Act and the Stamp Act. The Quartering Act forced colonists to shelter and give supplies to British soldiers. Mom! Why is there a British soldier in my bed? Read the quartering act, honey. <laughs> now, the quartering act was really annoying. I mean, I don't want a bunch of guys in red suits coming into my house, eating my food and sleeping in my bed. And taking my stuff. It was awful. They took my horse of the future, my bird of the future, and my teddy bear. The Stamp Act required all legal and commercial documents, like newspapers, to have an official stamp to show that there was a tax. But what really pushed me over was when they released the Stamp Act. I didn't want to pay more for newspapers and brochures. It was stupid. Only person who liked it were those tax collectors. But then people started talking about protesting against the Stamp Act. I joined because I really didn't like it. I mean, we were we were totally up signs, tarring and feathering tax collectors, burning and ripping up stamped paper. It was great. Ha ha, stamp paper. Eat it. Eat it. <laughs> then we started boycotting British goods. Hmm, cereal. British biscuits. Yuck. Americanos? Now that's more like it. By 1766, we had finally got them to get rid of the Stamp Act. Of course, in 
1765, Parliament also released the Declaratory Act, stating that the Parliament had all-powerful control over us in the colonies. Ha ha, us fancy rich people in British have power over you people in the colonies. Ha ha ha! <laughs> of course, most of us in the colonies just completely ignored the Declaratory Act. In 1767, the Townsend Acts created. The first part of them said that the New York Assembly was suspended until they house the British soldiers. No way, you red coat! <laughs> the second part of this act taxed tea, lead, paint, glass, and other things. Remember, when choosing a paint, you want to choose a color that's nice and happy, like this. What? of these acts were getting annoying and all these taxes were costing us a lot of money. So we began to boycott and protest again. I don't think so. Yeah. Now in 1678, 1,000 soldiers were sent to the colonies. There was a lot of tension between them and the colonies. Yeah, I was one of the British soldiers sent to America in 1768. And you know what? The colonists weren't very fond of me. Hey, lobster! You know, I find that term very offensive, you darn Yankee! <laughs> then, on March 5th, 1770, the dam burst. Yeah, I remember the Boston Massacre. Me and my friends down by the dock. Saw a few British soldiers that we thought we'd pick on. Hey, Redcoats! Yankee! Lobster! Yankee! Lobster! You know what? <laughs> the Yankees killed six of us that day. All we were trying to do was make conversation. Anyway, good news was to come. A month after this, the Parliament recalled the entire Townsend Acts. It was a great break for us. Of course, they didn't take away the tea, tea tax because they still wanted to show that we had power over them. Finally, we had hit another victory. In 1773, the colonists faced another issue. The Parliament had released the Tea Act. It allowed only the Britain e British East Indian India tea to be sold in the colonies. Most colonists were used to drinking smuggled tea that they didn't have to pay a tax on. But now they only had one kind of tea to drink that could be only sold by British merchants and it had a tax on it. I was furious about the Tea Act. I love tea. And I, yes, I was used to drinking smuggled stuff that was cheap. Now they were charging us way more and putting a tax on tea that wasn't nearly as good as the stuff made in Holland. Most of us, when we had the tea act, tried to find replacements to tea. But coffee really isn't the same. That was about when the Boston Tea Party happened. I remember it clearly. I was walking at night on the docks, looking at the beautiful trees across reflections across the water. That's when I noticed 
a group of men boarding all the boats that carried the tea. I watched and they took it and tossed it over the edge, one after another. I was like, oh my goodness, somebody is throwing away all that tea. Then it hit me. It was the sons of liberty. They took protesting to the next level by dumping out th over 300 chests of tea. Of course, I tried to do my part to protest. After the Boston Tea Party, the Parliament was extremely angry, and you could tell a war was soon to come. But that is a whole nother story.